You know, and this is just emotion. This is a um, this is the kind of show. This is very emotional. This show. This is a, uh, it's ignited with a bunch of passion, a bunch of love and stuff. But it's dealing with the truth too, and dealing with the truth of human beings, and with the truth of human beings, we're flawed, and you know, we beat ourselves up sometimes, and sometimes we have to forgive ourselves and love us, love ourselves regardless. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, welcome to another episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Evan Britton. And I'm Mike Tyson. Hell yeah, my brother. We have an awesome guest today. Awesome guest. We've got Chris Cyborg in the house. Nah, thank welcome. you. Welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. It's great to have so you here. Are you originally from Brazil? Um, I was born in Brazil, but I live in America now almost yeah. 10 years. Yes. That's you awesome. like it here? Yes, I do. Awesome. It's the place that then give you the opportunity for me to show my job. It's nice, really nice. Excellent. Where, where do you live? What part uh, of the country? Huntington Beach. Oh, sweet. That's yeah, very close. close. You live close yeah, by. Yeah. Yes. Newport Beach. Yeah, uh, nice. Real nice. Close. That's awesome. Well, aside from being a UFC champion, um, you're also, you've done a ton of incredible work um, with Fight for the Forgotten and Justin Wren's organization, another UFC guy. And tell us a little bit about that. I know you do a lot of great work over in Africa with children and helping people bring re bringing resources to those areas. So tell us a little bit about that. You know, the first thing I always like to tell my tell my fans, I'm, I was the champion a long time, but the most important be the champion, the people champion. You know, like make the difference. It's not just the champion hold the belt, but make the difference. And I always do missionary work in Brazil. And this time I went to Uganda, mm. and very special. We think we help people, but we help uh, us. Right. Because we see a lot of things there. And I have amazing experience. Um, I work with Fight for God. We put like in two village, water well. Okay. And we went there for celebrate the water. But it's very nice because you f see like, you cannot complain about anything. Yeah. The worst case in your life you hear is not the same there. You know, and I just, okay, I, I was not, I don't like to do videos, anything I do I like this because the show, I want to show off. No, no, I want to maybe yeah. open the people heart to do the same, you know, and then I think work for just is nice because the fight for God, because I, I put the water and I went there, see it works because it's something, a lot of things people complain, okay, but I help, but we don't see it, it did it or not, you know, and. And uh, I'm gonna be forever champion for them, for sure. You know, they're gonna have clean water all the time when they wake up. It is more special. Yeah, that's so important. Bringing yes. clean water to yes. people who don't have it. We, okay. Because we we really don't think we have people in the world have this problem. Because you yeah. wake up every day, you didn't know. I know. You just turn on a faucet and there's water. Yes, yes. You it, take it for granted, Mike. Yes. I mean. Yeah. Um, I've been to um, South Africa before, Soweto, that's the way it's called, Soweto, and I've seen this little baby kid, like Mike, he's like six, seven years old, and he's playing with a giant pig around 500 pounds. That pig is capable of eating that kid. He's a vicious animal, but he's playing with it, smacking it around, <laughs> jumping on the back, putting it in the head, like wrestling it. And I'm saying, what a life, and he lives in shambles. Wow. He lives in shambles. He lives like in the tent house when it's hot. It must be boiling in there, and it's just no clean water, and... Uh, AIDS ravished the yes. whole, oh, forget it, and these people are happy. Yes, this is wow. true. Yeah. You know, uh, wow. I, they, don't, yes. they don't expect anything. See, a guy like me and you, we expect something. They don't expect anything, but they're happy without anything. Yes. Mm. It's true. Something that we can never comprehend because we were never yes. you know, we taught that way, to yeah. be grateful. We never taught grateful. We were always beaten in submission and no gratitude. Mm. We were never yes. taught at a uh, you know, young age gratitude. This is one thing changed, like touched my heart because when I look at the kids there, they don't have shoes. I saw one girl going to school, she just have one like left size and have shoes. And, and they look at her, I feel my heart like I want to cry because I feel sad. But they don't know about their life. They didn't appreciate what they have. And look at them, everybody smile. It's true. Yeah, it's they're very true. grateful. It's very each nice. Other. <laughs> yes, you know we're yes. nothing. I, I don't understand. And that. another That's another amazing. crazy thing there. I see kids. They're bare food. Kick beat one's one snake, one little snake. The place I went, the water place, the village. We saw we filmed there, and then we saw the little kids bare food, kill one snake, stepping on. Wow. 
Oh wow! We were freaking what? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Just the kids handling the, kids. the, the yes. snake that comes in. Yes. So what? You guys go and you dig water wells. What is the other work that is done on these trips? Uh, I went to South Africa, the place you went, and then I have a, have a good team there, and then I'm training there because I was thinking I'm gonna fight in Brazil. Okay. May 11, and I went to South Africa training. And, and, it come, and I hear about just going to beat Uganda, say, no, I want to go with you. And I, I always put the water and they say, okay, if you come, you're going to do the celebrate. And they did celebrate, we visit the pygmies, because just as like the big, the big pygmies, and the pygmies, it's like, uh, it's normal people, but the people it's small. see. They're small. Oh, yeah, mm. I've heard about them, never seen them, yes. but I heard that freaked me out. <laughs> yeah, they small. have some people that are giants too, yes. though, right? They have some tribes that are giants. Mm. And it's crazy because... Justin lived with them like one year in Congo in the jungle. Yeah. And these people we help then then pass it to the border in the jungle, but pass to Uganda. And then the people put them like a, some jail. They cannot live there. Then put mm. 300. Now then 160. Because all the sickness, IDs, a uh, lot of bad things, mm. drink bad water. And when they went there, we help these people. But like in Congo, have like 400,000 pygmies and they're all the slave. Wow. Because people don't see them like people, right. human beings. They think they animals. Are they slaves? Yeah, they're slaves in Congo. And these people now in Uganda, we help them. We're going to help them farm, teach them farm because they're always hunting. They live in the jungle. And they're going to help, we're just going to help them farm. We put the water. The kids start study like in English. But they probably didn't have the independence 100 years yet. Yes. It's not even 100 years yes. yet, is it? Yeah. We probably had the independence in the 60s or the 70s. Probably maybe something like that. In the Congo. In the Congo. Yeah. yeah. Then they had what? Then they had Uidi Amin and he was the dictator and they yeah. ravaged the country and all that stuff. <sighs> yeah. But, you know, glad that we help little ones. And you know? some people are going to help too. But nice we're going to give you because they don't know another life too. They're hunting, they eat what they hunt. And then now we're going to, the kids start learning English there. It's really cool. We can talk to the kids. And they'll now help the village. They're gonna help you farm. You know, it's change the life of somebody. You know? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yes, that's amazing work. I mean, but we never think have people living this still living in the jungle in these yeah. days. Like they have tribes that have never been um, in contact with people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. I know. I was afraid a little bit. You know, I, really? absolutely. Because you know. yeah, for sure. I started to read. I was in Uganda. I started to read. I was sleeping my knife inside me, and then <laughs> and I said, "Man, I know it's gonna work a lot, but you know, my son does what she does. He's she, um, he goes to Haiti and stuff, and." Oh, wow. uh, I at one time told my son, please don't go there. I would never go there. I would, you know, just, and then I understood um, the blessings that you get from going there. Mm. You know, my son's just a kid. He's 16. He he doesn't know what he's doing, but he does know what he's doing. Miguel went? Yeah. He, he, wow, he went man. To, he went to Africa. He went to Haiti. That's beautiful. Uh, nice. Wells, wells and all that stuff, fresh water. Uh, it's special. It's nice. Yeah, that's what really he does. Nice. I don't know. He's, yes. he's special, yeah. I mean, we just get so caught up in the rat race of life in America. It's true. You know? Yes. Like, trying to make money and trying to be successful and, you know, trying to look good and all this bullshit. And we don't even stop to think for a minute that there are people across the world that don't even have running water. Yes, yeah. Like, you've got to walk miles to get clean yes, water. True. Listen, yes. hey. If you sent them a thousand dollars, it would last them a lifetime. Yes. Okay. That's true. A thousand dollars, a lifetime. You know what we've done with a thousand dollars before? Oh my God. All right, a lifetime for a thousand dollars. There'd be a ball over there. Yeah, it's great, but it's good. Good because it's awesome. We can. It's nice when you go visit some place because we stop living in the bubble. Because some people yeah. live in the bubble, never see anything, yeah. think this world we live. It's only this world. And I have a lot of. A lot of things, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, I imagine that's an amazing lesson to see, you know, like you were talking about, you go there and these people are living in such dire conditions, yet they're still finding happiness. I know. Like yes. that is such a God shot. Yes. Where did, no, they go, where did they go to the bathroom? Did they have sewage system with it? Did they go in the woods? Where did no, they no, the then, because now then, okay, like then they want the village and cannot get out. Mm -hmm. But then they make one hole. It's one hole in the yeah. floor, and then they don't have a restaurant or anything. Like, yeah. like then, in certain parts of Europe, is like that, too. You just go somewhere, there's a hole in the floor, and you yeah. go in that room. 
yeah. India's like that yeah. too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, we take our bathrooms for <laughs> granted too. You yeah, know? Yeah. Sometimes we won't even use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I take two days, I'm not in the shower, I'm in my house right there, I'm not washing them. I mean, fuck you. Yeah. God, it's crazy. <laughs> Do they have shamans in these, like, villages? Are there I'm people sure they who... Have. I'm sure they do. They invented this stuff pretty much. Are there, like, village doctors who have, like, traditional medicine that they use Like in Soweto, I'm sure they do. Yeah. Soweto has become, like, almost um, a tourist attraction. You know, I went to see so many Europeans, and I was in the middle of the jungle. Wow. Yeah, I think then when we're there, the, the, the village, they need, like, leaves, some leaves. Interesting. I think those leaves, they make no hungry. Interesting. And maybe happy. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, uh, I guess like what I'm asking is like, what's the medical access if somebody needs like medical care? Then die. They're dead. Then die. Well, then they'll not have. Yeah. Listen, um, the diseases, whatever they have now, only thing they need is a shot or something. Right. Yes. Penicillin. Something Penicillin. simple. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's crazy. Yeah. So crazy. Yes. And then we think it's little place, it's a big. And now it's not just the place I went to Uganda, it's a lot of places, Gong Congo. Right. And when I went to Uganda, I see, I, I check it out, and then we see it's not the worst place. It's mm. like number seven, ten. Imagine number one. What's <laughs> number one? Imagine uh, a, whole, a I, whole village of um, disease infected people. Mozambique, now it's really bad after that. A whole village, imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Kids, the kids that are young, 13, 12 been attacked and uh, molested and the whole village is infected with diseases. Yeah. Some of them believe if they have sex with a virgin that the disease would dissipate, would disappear. Uh, That's some of their rumors. Yeah. And then in Congo, have uh, in Congo, some people believe if you then like have a relationship sex with a pygmies, mm -hmm. they're gonna cure HIV. They will catch it? Yeah, like if in, yeah. Wow. Well, then they must kill them in the street. Yes, yeah. Huh? yeah. They mean nothing to them, huh? Yeah. They are, ah. Yeah, bad. Bad stuff. Bad stuff. <sighs> bad stuff. How long have you guys known each other? Have you met before? I've met her before, yeah. Yes, I went yeah. I went to your place in Las Vegas. Yeah, you have? Yes. Wow, yes. I, we take there one picture go. together. I, I don't have my phone here, but we take one picture together. Yes. When did you guys meet? Man, maybe oh, two... Yeah. No far. I think uh, I was not in the UFC yet mm. when I met him. And I met you at the fights too. Yeah, at the you fights too. With you. Yes, yes. Well, tell us about your your fighting career, Chris. Like, how did you come into? How did you come to fighting? You know, I I never want to be a fighter before. Mm. Like, I don't have a dream, anything. And when I was teenager, my my dad loved boxing, and he's always watching the Mike Mike fights. And then he's always I wait with him for a watch, but I was a fall asleep because in Brazil it's like three a.m. Yeah. It's very late. <laughs> yeah. And but I never connect to the fight, but I always like to sport. Before I do track and field, I play handball. And what events and track? Uh, I do like heptathlon. It's like a seven. Okay. Seven. We do two hundred meters. Oh, okay. Meters. Yeah. Four hundred meters. Eight hundred meters. Oh. Um, nice, like a decathlon. Yes, but, but seven. you do seven because okay. girl. Yes, and we start. I start playing handball. I play handball. Like, but everybody think it's handball. Think you play in the wall? No, no. It's a real game. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a six against six. Uh, it's person. serious. Yes. Yeah. And then I start with twelve, and then play whole my when high school, college, and then when I was in university, I was playing handball. And this is like save me because I have a scholarship. I really want to be the best at what I'm doing, make me put out the drugs, how to do bad things. And when I was playing handball university, one guy saw me, his black belt from shooter box gym. Mm. And he told after the game, he said, you know, I think you can be a great fighter. And he's giving me a shooter box card. I look at him crazy and say, nah, I'm not. <laughs> and because I have a bad, bad, uh, Bad situations when I go to school. I have my ass kick all the time. You know, I <laughs> never think I'm going to be a fighter. And I look at him like, me? Okay. And then all the time he saw me in university. He tell me, you went to the gym, went to the gym. Okay, one day I show up to the gym. And there was my tight train. I watch. And then I say, maybe I can do that. I was strong, but I don't have, like, coordination for punch anybody. And, and then when I did my first training, it's nice because when people punch me, I don't know punch, but I want to punch back. 
And then this is the one thing you cannot teach people. You can teach it techniques. You can teach it then. You know, you can say this. You know? well, what the first thing that happened when you got punched in your face? How, I, how did you feel? I went punch back. Yeah. You know? <laughs> heard, huh? Yeah. I uh, went punch back, like, you know, make me anger. Make mm. me anger. And yeah. then, okay, I start learning. And then in three months training, I told my coach, you know, I want to do one fight. Because I always compete. I compete mm -hmm. race. I, I do the handball. And I like to compete. So, and I want to challenge. I would like to compete. And he told me, Chris, I'm going to see what I can do for you. I said, okay. And then in one month later, he told me, Chris, we got a fight for you, but you have a problem. There's no Muay Thai, it's MMA. You're going to have to learn little things and more. Mm. I was like, okay, cool. I didn't know. I was 19 years old. I was, didn't know it was <laughs> going to be a fight. I was going, I'm stressed, nothing. And I did my first fight. I, I was doing good, but I lost the first fight. Because in Brazil, in the event, you can step on the face. When the people on the floor... You can step on the head. Oh, fuck. Yeah, and the shooter box very good about this because in the Pride, other events, and then we train a lot. And then when I go step on, on, the, on the, her head in the floor, she push me. And then I fall and I dislocate my elbow. <sighs> but I didn't mean, I, I was like, I say, you know, and after the fight, I put my elbow in place and asked for rematch same night. And in my heart, I say, you know, I'm born for this. This is no heavy ride card. I can do whatever I want. I born for this, and after this day, I stopped doing handball. I stopped ray run in track and field, and it just made me. I love it. That's awesome. Yes, is awesome. that's an awesome story. It's nice because I'm not looking for like something that God put in my life to yeah. be a fighter. Because and I felt my heart. I born for this, you know. Another sport just helped me build who I am, but yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Mike and I talk about all that that all the time. See, I wanted um that's so strange. After Cuss explained the significance of being this individual, the champ, the heavyweight champ, then I read about them and then I wanted to be these guys. I read about their lives and what they had and how glamorous lives they had. You know, all the women, all the parties, all, all the parties, all the girls, all the cars, all the and yeah. it's wow. This, this guy like these guys didn't even have laws to obey. They're like gods. Yeah, and I said, This is what I wanna be. I wanna be like these guys. Yeah. You know, that's I wanted to dedicate my life being like these guys. Yeah. Me too, man. I remember that feeling too. But that's so funny that you were like, you have You know, no it's harder for the woman because we gonna, you don't have yeah. the example. Yeah. Like Mike, like he's at the example. Look, okay, I want to be like that guy. And the woman's hard because this is when I did my, I did a couple fights in Brazil. And then when I have the opportunity to one fight in America, and I see how I say, man, these people like my job. Yeah. It's really job because in the beginning of my career, I trained at the gym, like only me to grow with 40 guys. Yeah. And <laughs> my mom don't agree. She said, ah, I want you to be dentist. I want yeah. you to be dentist. I thought, okay, I'm not dentist, but I can't take tooth off, you know, I tell yeah. her. But yeah, and then and then when I start I start to fight, I say, man, I born for this, and then I see the opportunity in America and I move to America. For stay six months and they almost ten years already. Yes. That's awesome. Yes, that's so cool. And I mean, I'm sure you feel like the universe has put you on this path too now with where you're traveling the world and helping people. Yes. Then this is the one thing I think when God bless you, uh -huh. I think you have to bless people, somebody, people. Yeah. Because if you okay, God choose you, bless you. Anyways, if you don't have money, I bless you, the people around you. You know, be happy, motivate people, try to change the, the, your world you live. I think when God bless you, something you bless people, because why is going to bless you if you're not going to do anything? You're going to stuck on you. Okay, I'm going to change, I'm going to give another person. You know, because this, I, I like to use my platform for share my faith, for share, motivate people, do something different, make the difference, you know, around you. I think this is the most special because champion is nice. You can have the belt, but you cannot have the belt forever, you know? I stay like 20, 13 years in the field, but I know in my heart before, I say, you know, champion are going to be forever, but they can be in cheap people lives be champion, you know? Remind yeah. about you, what you did, for sure that place, the village I went, they're going to be the champ for them. Imagine, you have a water, you know? Yeah. It's, it, this is special. Yeah. You never underestimate, you know, I know you're saying, you know, I can't be champion forever, but... Never underestimate the power of the championship belt. Yes. It lives forever mm. in people's minds. Yes. Mm. You're a champ forever in some people's minds. Yes. I don't know. Certain, I don't, yes, you know, true. I don't, think, I don't think it's right sometimes, but I can't stop. That's just who it is. 
or what it is. In people's mind, they always make it make make you the fox go to you. Yeah. You need to use this platform, you know. Yes. And then will you absolutely. See, yes. I will always remember you. People will always remember you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mike's totally right about that. I mean, I really look at my life now as whoever I am, I want to spread blessings to people oh, and nice. positivity. Yes. You know, as much if I can lift somebody up every day, everyone that I talk to that I meet, if I can just lift them up a little bit to be a little bit better for themselves every day, it's like I'm like, those are, I'm just giving, it's giving people blessings like you're talking about, you know, and spirit gathers around that person to help them rise and to lift their vibration. Yeah, because of this world and now people more bully, bully, bully people, each other. And then like, like it, you feel can, because everybody allow Instagram, you see mm-hmm. you, you know, you know, have the perfect body. You see a lot of teenage on suicide because bully, you know, because like you have to support them. Yeah. You know, you can support somebody to look close to you, you know, it doesn't matter if you no money, but your attitude, you know, yeah. something you do. And yeah. then I bring one shirt because before I bring for both. Beautiful. I, I make the shirt like Chris Cyborg uh-huh. against the word. I love that. One fun actually, I send it to me and I use it for like a little while. But because the water well, we make a plan and I feel my heart, you know, maybe we can be against the word, but we can change the word too. And I make different, I take out the, the verse and they put I like the change. That. I love that. Yeah. I like that. I love it. And I bring the gift for you guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Much. Together you can change. You word some people. That's so awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Mike, how do you feel about that, man? Tell me. I mean, because I feel like you're just Mr. Spread the Love these days, especially. Mike! Oh, yeah. Saturday. And don't forget to ship out those hoodies to our fans. How do I know who this goes to? You know, this is not what I do. Fuck! Hey, Evan, what's up? I'm not gonna get the hoodies out in time, man. Evan, I'm busy, okay? I'm at a photo shoot, all right? Try ShipStation.com. ShipStation? Right now, Hotbox and listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use promo code HOTBOXING. There's absolutely no risk you can start your free trial without even entering your credit card info. So use code HOTBOXIN and get your ship together at ShipStation.com. I'm aware that a lot of people like you may watch me and may look up to me and think I'm a certain kind of guy, I'm a good guy, but they have to understand that I'm not worthy of praise. Only God is worthy of praise. It's true. And they, 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 make, they do these things. They, I, I look at YouTube and I see guys have Mike Tyson, Immortal, Mike Tyson, God, and um, I'm not worthy of that. You are, Mike. Hey, stop. I know me. You can think what you want, but I know. Um, not for somebody to, worry, to praise me or anything, no. I'm always just Mike. I well, was one of those people that worshiped people because I had nothing. Imagine how low I had to be to worship a nothing. Somebody that's nothing, and I worshiped them. Well, I think you've seen that to the utmost that anyone can do anything that they want to do. And when I did the toe the last time, Mm -hmm. all I did was... um, my whole life was telling me that all my, when I die, all I'm going to do is apologize. I felt all the pain I ever caused somebody, all the pain I ever caused people in my journey in this world. I didn't see anybody that felt the pain. I couldn't apologize enough. I was so happy that I, I woke up, you know. A 
Well, it's beautiful that you can look at that, man. <sighs> Painful stuff, though. Ugly stuff. The told is fucking ugly stuff, dude. Put that realness right in your face. I don't want to fuck you up. I'm sorry to fuck this interview up, but I'm just saying that's my experience, what I experienced. Well, you know, everybody do mistakes. And then, but God know your heart. You know, if you feel in your heart, he, he's listening to you, and then he's going to forgive you. The only person can, only him, you know, it's... Hey, it's um, after the, doing a toy, I don't know anything about God, you know? I don't know anything about God. And you then you, you, you... You don't know anything about You did a lot of good things, and then you... Inspire a lot of people, me, myself, like be the champion, beat everybody, yeah. and do your best you can. And you're example for a lot of people. Well, that's, you know? that's interesting. And I used to never look at it like that. Yes. I don't look at my life like that, you know, because yeah. I'll, I'll never be forgiven. You, you will. God forgive everyone if you open your heart for Him. I don't think God believes I exist. No, no, he it's is in no, my own he mind knows. that I think I'm somebody. It's my in own the, ego, my own self love and No, he loves you. Egotistic and then this. before you're born, he knows you're gonna born. He knows everything. You know, and okay, because you say people know about your mis some mistake you say because you everybody look to you. You know, like me, if I do some mistake you're gonna be ever the same page in the newspaper. You know, but a lot of people do mistake all the time, but because because they don't see them every day. They're no, no famous, you know, like. But if you open your heart for God, you know where to open your heart. Maybe you say don't open for God because he didn't know you. You didn't know him, but he know you. He's, he's, he's going to forgive you. Like I learned, I follow him. and then I believe we have to pay for our sins. I believe we have to pay. You you may you can you can pay. I, I haven't think. paid enough. I haven't paid enough. If that if I die tomorrow, I've I've won. I have to write the world a check. I was no. overpaid. I have to pay for my sins. No, no. If you open your heart to God, yeah, forgive I agree. me. I agree. Yeah, He's gonna forgive you. I agree. You know, you're gonna forgive you. I I believe this. You know, we you're not gonna. But it has to be some action. Like what you doing is action. It's not me just saying action for forgiveness because I'm. What are you doing now? What are you doing now? You know? Just read you. You open your heart. For sure, open the, the heart to a lot of people. You know, and then change. Sometimes uh, you, for people say, you know, I did a lot of mistake, and I feel sorry. There's not a lot of people can do that. If you're doing this now because you're special and because here you read you, you can change your life about doing this, what are you doing? Like, you, God giving you an opportunity now for you can do this. You're doing. You're doing something cool. Hey, I appreciate that you, um, yes. you acknowledge that. I don't know if it's being cool, but look at it. It's just... Yes, because you open your heart now. Some people don't open your heart. Maybe somebody now listen to read your call somebody, you know. Forgive me the thing I did. I'm sorry, you know, because you touched some heart. And then this is the this is opportunity you're doing, you know. It is amazing what you're doing. You're doing your open heart. A lot of people don't want to open. No, I, I do it out of fear. I know um, from my experience, I know I'm going to wind up at, in some way. I'm going to have to be um, questioned for this. You know, it's going to be a challenge, you know. And then we're going to be praying for you. Uh, thank you. Yes, you for God, God guide to you, clear. touch your heart, put beautiful people in your life and talk to you. And uh, I'm going to be always be around you if you need to talk. Appreciate yes, you. for sure. Mike, for sure. Can I say something? You can say anything. I'd love for you to talk to me, brother. You You had to go through all of that so that you could change the world, dude. Well, yeah, I don't see that. I don't know. You don't realize how many lives you're changing, saving because of who you are and what you've been through and how you're willing to speak about it now. You know, I speak about it now because I'm afraid. Because I did the toad the other day, and they threw it in my face. Nobody can judge you, like. But people do. People does. People does. But you know, nobody allowed to do. They don't change anything. Only God can judge you because He's the only one perfect. You know, and. You yeah. just need to forgive yourself. Yeah. Because you're loved. 
Yeah. Yeah, people can forgive themselves too. We do. I do forgive myself. I want to be. I'm a megalomaniac. Yeah, I forgive myself. I'm fucking perfect. But the reality of it is, is that you did something, motherfucker. Yes. You got to pay up. Yes. That's just my world. That's just what I'm experiencing now. I know, man. Well, I love you, dude. And I love you as well, you know. I don't know. I don't know why. But it's like you're my brother. I agree. I am your brother. I want to be your brother. You know what I mean? That's why we're here together. We're succeeding as brothers and striving as brothers. You know, and this is just emotion. This is a um, this is the kind of show. This is very emotional. This show. This is a, uh, it's ignited with a bunch of passion, a bunch of love and stuff. But it's dealing with the truth too, and dealing with the truth of human beings, and with the truth of human beings, we're flawed, and you know, we beat ourselves up sometimes, and sometimes we have to forgive ourselves and love us, love ourselves regardless and stuff. We got to be um, Maybe. responsible for ourselves as well. Maybe you'll remember just the things you think be the bad things, but you do where you come from and then what you did for sport. You you in in a lot of teenage mind, you know, like a lot of people maybe came through a lot of things you gone on before in your life. And as you know Mike Tyson did, he's been champion, he did fight great, I can do that. If he did, I can do that. You know? And that is you can you can know you cannot be mad at yourself. Will you you, God can forgive anybody. You just open your heart. You are doing, you know. And this is the more special thing, really. I don't know. I just, um, I just, um, the word I'm trying to do is um, re I re-examine myself. You know what I mean? I do. Um, I don't know. What do you call it? Annual, annually, um, resource of myself and I check myself out. And sometimes. You know, um, life is difficult to even live. You know, that life is pretty difficult. And then, after, and then, besides life being difficult, you have to be a responsible individual. You have to be establish yourself for your children and your family and your wife and everything. And life, um, sometimes it comes fast at me. It comes real fast. Yes. Sorry about that, Chris. No, I'm mean, really <laughs> happy. You know, I was. I believe like this. Nothing happened for no reason. No, this is a good. Yes. shit. this is just dealing with the realness. Here. Yes. Yeah. Realness, you know. You know That's and, it, man. I mean. Fuck. And then another thing, bad. I think bad things. Is, uh, if it happen in your life, I think for change you. you no, know, God taught, change you, make you better. Yeah, you know, absolutely. everything you pass through for sure make you better. You better than before. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Yes. You know, I have a great support system, family, and everything. Yes, and now uh, this is the good thing. You know, I I really don't remember about this, but the one time I fell doping, and I feel very sad. People judge me. People like, say a lot of things, but the only people know who you are if you use your shoes, and they're never gonna feel this. And a lot of people judge me. A lot of people give back from me. And I have some days I'm in my room, I was crying because people judge you. And do you know? And then say, but after pass everything through, God just changed, make me better. You know, I, I don't feel bad about that happened, but I feel I, I feel bad that I'm a better person than before. You know, and this has happened. Like once something bad happened in your life, like you have to see, okay, what I need to learn from this. For sure you learn a lot of things. You know, it's different, Mike, and and this is the most special. You know, like uh, the life happens stuff for us, but for we cannot quit. We have to continue and use this for changes. I agree. You know, yes. I just always stick with my only self inventory. You know, sometimes yeah. when I do my self inventory, I still wow, step back and say, "Hey, that wasn't cool. I shouldn't have did that today." Yeah. You know. Yes. Yeah, I have to do that too. <sighs> So what's your diet like? <laughs> How do you eat? Uh, do you know, uh, I was, I have to, I walk usually seven, seven, five kilos, seven, seven, but I fought um, 145, yeah. like six, six kilos. And I usually like to stay on, eat healthy all the time, uh, vegetable, uh, salmon. I eat, uh, I, don't eat, I don't like too much fast food. You know, sometimes like after fight, you die long yeah. time, you know, but really my have my mom healthy, clean, healthy, and then uh, we very clean, like clean, like vegetables, um, salad, fish, 
and for keep my weight very low. You know, no, because if I start eating, I'm go 80 kilos easy. I was, I was, um, when I was a fighter, I would, I, um, after fight, like you said, I would gorge, I would eat and drink everything, anything, everything, eat, drink. It's yeah. gorge, women, it's everything like a pig. feast, right? So I have to always lose from 260 to go down to 217. Damn, Mike. Yo, know, boom, but always doing it six weeks. Boom, rip, six weeks, rip. six weeks. Like, yeah, yeah bro. nice. I have to, I need, I need it like. Eight, ten weeks. Yeah, six, seven weeks. Yes. Yeah, brother. That's hard. Yeah, nothing but water, nothing pretty much a, pretty much a vegan. So a lot of fasting. Yes. And doing a lot of fasting, a lot of sparring, a lot of running, a lot of sprinting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of exercise. You're just getting yeah, you're ready. Yeah, destroying yourself. Ready for war, destroying dude. Destroying yourself, yeah. Yeah, so you're getting focused when you have a fight. You focus for one thing and they help. You know, help a lot if you can keep the fox. Nice. No doubt. Man, Chris, is there anything that you want to shout out before we wrap this thing up? Yeah, want people to know how to get in touch, contact with you? Yeah, you know, go my Instagram, Chris Cyborg. If you want to know about Fight for Godding, you can go my my website, Chris fight Cyborg. What? Fight for Godding. Fight the for thing, the forgotten. Yeah, okay. fight for the forgotten. Okay. Uh, you can go my website, chriscyborg.com. Um, we'll throw all that stuff in the show notes. Yes, and I have my pink belt is the last week. I doing like for to help women with training. I share my experience, uh, like I'm a fighter. Show a little bit of mix of martial arts for them, help them for self defense. I just say thank for the girls and all, all the help my team. Um, if you want my shirts, change your word and the blue one like us. Hell you yeah! Know? Yeah, go, go to my website and I just say thank you. And my YouTube too, you guys can check. Awesome. I'm really invest in my YouTube because people usually sometimes see me, they say, met me, they say, Chris, you're really nice. I say, how do you think of who I am? Well, listen, that's <laughs> our image. People are caught up with our fighting image. People would never come near me before they, they know me now. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe I'm talking to you. I always thought you were fucking evil and mean. I know, and then the people say, oh, you're really nice. I say, man, I cannot be like it. You know, KG. KG, yeah. I'm there for a war. Yeah. You know, I kill him again and die. And But it's nice because YouTube, I can show a little bit who I am yeah. real. Like, no, I'm serious when I kill somebody, but, you know. You smile, so you smile, you're beautiful. I never yeah. smiled when I was fighting, so people thought I was evil. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then because my nickname, Two Cyborg, and the people yeah. say, oh, this girl don't That's have a heart. Scary. She's there. But no, I have a heart. I have yeah, a big yeah. heart. And and this is a YouTube channel. And then say thank you for you guys for they have the opportunity. Yeah. I feel very blessed to be here and talk to you, Mike. Thank you. Thank um, you so much, Chris. And, You're an amazing spirit yourself. Yes. I'm and so if, glad to spoke with you as well. Yes. And I mean, you know, I mean, I'm really happy to be you. You're example for a lot of teenagers, a lot of kids. And awesome. I, I'm an I'm a example for me. And I just say blast for be here. Thank you guys. Thank no, you thank so much. You. Nice. Thanks, Mike. No, thank you, buddy. <laughs> You're the a man. safer hit for athletes. What's that about? This is one of our shirts, yeah. man. Hell yeah. I like that. Cannabis, baby. A safer protect hit for the athletes. brain. It's you true. protect the brain. <laughs> it's THC, I CBD, like neuroprotectants, baby. All right, everybody. Well, that was a fucking wacky one. Until next time, I'm Evan Britton. I'm Mike Tyson. And you're this Chris, is Chris Cyborg. <laughs> We're out of here, everybody. Peace. Thanks. <laughs>